You're watching City Lights Dubai. <laughs> Can I just say thank you so much for having us? Um, I'm married to Jock, as Dan just said, and we lead a beautiful church in Bradford in the north of England. We've been a senior pastors there for the last three years, and so it's been a joy to see that and to see the church grow and to see God continue to build his church. You know, after COVID and all that that happened, he continues to build his church. We've seen growth upon growth upon growth. And, and so it's been really beautiful. We have two kids, age 15 and 16, and they are, they're tall, they're taller than me. <laughs> like Jock says, we like them, they're great kids. And so and they're, having, they're having a great time with us being away, but we have so enjoyed being in Dubai. It's been beautiful. What a beautiful city you live in. I mean, we went to Dubai Beach yesterday. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> I normally think beaches and calm, and it was like, I have never seen so many LED lights around me in my life. <laughs> but what a beautiful place that you live in, and how amazing that God has called you to be here for such a time as this. And we love your pastors. They are incredible. We were talking yesterday about Daniel, and Daniel is someone who is called a man of an extraordinary spirit because of the test that he went through. And these two are people of extraordinary spirit. The Bible says that Jesus calls himself humble and gentle. The most powerful one calls himself humble and gentle. And the power in these two, they are humble and gentle people of an extraordinary spirit. And I hope that you know that. And they are incredible. And I am so excited for what is, God is going to do, and especially with your third service. Incredible. So big round of applause to all of you and all that you are doing. I'll tell you something else I was impressed with this morning. I go to a lot of churches and you find the first song is normally the warm-up song for everyone. But you know what? There was something about you guys. Straight away, you seem to understand the minute we start to worship, we're already joining with the angels who are already worshiping. And there was a sense that this is the church who understands that. That this is the church who gets, we enter in with praise, with thanksgiving and praise. So again, beautiful church. Very excited for all that God is going to do. So well done on all that you are doing. Okay, so I'm going to, I get to open the scriptures this morning. It is such a privilege, so thank you so much for asking me. Jock is going to do service number two. In case you're wondering about my accent, I am half Irish, half Peruvian. Um, I have one, my mom's from Galway, and that side of the family is all, you know, celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Sometimes I don't even understand what they're saying. And then the other side, I have like my Peruvian family. All we were, my dad's from Lima, Peru. And I was going to speak Spanish yesterday with some of you Spanish speaking people here. And um, yeah, that side is all Spanish speaking. And so I grew up um, in lots of different countries in Suriname, Peru, moved around, went to international schools. And then somehow I ended up back in Bradford to go to university, met my husband, and have stayed there ever since. Yeah. I think it's the longest I've ever been somewhere, so Bradford is officially my home just because of the length of time that I've lived there. And so, yeah, it's a beautiful place to be, and um, yeah, it's where God called us. Hey, it's not, du it's not Dubai, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you go where you're called. Well, let's turn this morning to Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Um, we did a series recently at our church called Good News. And when it came my turn to preach, I really felt this word from God about his good news that sometimes doesn't get said very often. And so I want to take us there this morning and talk about that. The verse says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This morning, I want to talk to you about his yoke is easy. The most beautiful good news, his yoke is easy. And I don't know about you, but a yoke is not something we normally see in the British countryside up north. I have a picture here of what a yoke is. It is an instrument of labor. It is, um, to, it is an instrument that is used for two oxen to pull more weight together. And throughout the Old Testament, and we have a lot of metaphors that use the yoke. For example, if they were going to count their oxen, they always did it by yoke. Example number one, Job 1. Job owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 
500 yoke of oxen. So actually, he owned 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 oxen, but it was counted by yoke. God himself uses the yoke as a metaphor in Isaiah 58. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To lose the chains of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. The yoke was really understood in that time, that agricultural time. But for us, it can seem a little bit like, what do you mean, Lord? We're talking about an instrument of labor, and yet you are saying it is easy. How does this work? And yet God uses the word easy. Do you know how many times in the New Testament the word easy is used? One. This is it. <laughs> No other time does God use the word easy, and God is careful with his words. But he says, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. This instrument that seems to be for labor, or labor and carrying weights, he says, it's easy. Come to me. It's easy. And easy can sound really contradictory when you're thinking about a yoke, but there's a lot of things in the Bible that can sound contradictory. You know, the Bible talks that we are saved by faith, but also, and not works, but we're also... Faith of that works is dead. So we see it throughout the Bible that God says, you know, yeah, it's the crucifixion life. Carry your cross. But also it's the life most abundant because that's the life that I want for you. And so when he talks about this easy word, it just seems like such a strange word to be using. Early on in the year, um, I went to visit a church and the message that they spoke was beautiful. It was the Christian life is battles and blessings. It's battles and blessings. It's battles and blessings. But I was, what I was struck by was, it wasn't this life is easy. How many here would say, oh yeah, this life is easy? Anyone? Any, anyone on this side? <laughs> life is easy. And yet, God himself says, if you take my yoke, it is easy. I love to study. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and obviously, when you come to messages like this, I just want to dig in and find out more. And so I started looking for, well, what does this mean? My yoke is easy. And surprisingly, there's not a lot out there. <laughs> but there was this beautiful image that David Platt put out. And I didn't want to steal his image. And so like any modern person, AI. <laughs> Let's use AI for the kingdom. So here is my most incredible AI picture of what I think his yoke is easy looks like. Can you see that image? Now that almost looks unfair, doesn't it? That almost looks like, well, can I just make sure that we're all understanding that God is the big guy in this? <laughs> Before we go anywhere else. That almost looks unfair. Who's carrying the weight? It's almost like the little guy doing nothing except trotting along behind this other guy. It almost looks like, well, hang on a second. That doesn't seem right. Surely two would go together that are more equally matched. I go to the gym, well, okay, before Jock rolls his eyes. <laughs> I occasionally go to the gym. <laughs> but I have learned in my gym to avoid Wednesdays. And I avoid Wednesdays because Wednesday is matching up day. And I go to a CrossFit, guys. I mean, I'm talking like people who do competitions for life, right? And then there's me, and they all look at me, and there's the Wednesday, and choose your partner, and they look at me, and they're like... <laughs> <laughs> so I have, like, gym trauma for Wednesdays, because it's like going back to school, and you're, like, chosen last. And I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> I know who I am in Jesus. It's okay. <laughs> but that's the reality. Everybody wants to be matched up with someone of equal strength. And yet God says, actually, guys, hey, I want to take this for you. I want you to walk with me. And that's an invitation of participation. You know, we try to do so much on our own. I always say to people when they come to me and they say, oh, I'm really struggling to forgive. I'm like, well, you're trying to do it on your own. It's not about you trying to forgive someone. Turn to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, will you help me participate in your work of forgiveness? Would you help me just step in and understand what it's like to forgive somebody? Would you help me participate with you? There's just so many times when we try to do things on our own. And we forget, you know, the armor of God 
It's very protective, but it's very clear that the sword of <laughs> the sword of the word of God is is the offensive weapon. You know, for me, I had. Um, we went through a three-year transition, and for me, I was actually put on a lot of weight over it because there was a lot of stuff that happened, and I was just like, oh, God, woe is me. And, um, and I actually had to learn to use the Word of God. I have a great scripture, and I put it on my phone, and I just read scripture to myself because I'm like, you know what? I want to discipline myself. I want to make my body a slave. This is why I go to the gym. <laughs> But I've learned to use the word of God. What God says, yoke with me. He's talking about the word of God as well. He is saying, hey, I have some things that I want you to walk with, through with me. Okay. Um, I'd love to have my lovely assistant, Justin. Are you around? I have a lovely, yes. Justin, <laughs> come on up. <laughs> Justin, first of all, you just, you just need to help me bring that over here, if that's Okay. <laughs> Um, just in case we haven't understood the visual, we're going to understand the visual, so Justin. Come on, Justin. Can you put it over here? Is that okay? Thank you, Justin. <laughs> you probably need to take this cloth off, but that's all right. It's the a, it's a maximum weight that I can carry, guys. That's what it is. <laughs> all right, Justin, just, you just stay there a second, and we'll call you in one minute. <laughs> The Bible says, come to me, all you are heavy laden. Okay, this is the weights that I can carry, which is why we have this. But, I mean, this is heavy enough for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is heavy enough for me, guys. This is, this is the weight that I can carry. And the Bible says that we're all carrying weights. This is my weight, right? Oh, it's heavier than I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> come to me, all you who are heavy laden. I don't know how many of you are got this that you're carrying around. I don't, know, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know whether you've gone through grief, through disappointment, through trauma in your life, through, you know, things that hit us at work, with our family, in our marriages. We're all carrying some sort of weight. And I sometimes don't know what to tell people, you know. But what I love, and it's not me who's saying, telling somebody, hey, yoke yourself with Jesus. His yoke is easy. The good news is that it's not me saying it because I can't carry the weight. The good news is that God himself is saying it. God himself is saying, hey, come, let me help you. Now, Justin, would you come and help me with my weight? <laughs> is that okay? All right, let's lift it up. You better go in the middle, if that's all right. Thank you. <laughs> lift it up as high as you can. As high as you can. Up high, 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 high. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What a beautiful image. <laughs> no, 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 that's not the image. The image here is that this is, God is saying, come to me. And I, and I, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Now, Justin, can we walk together? Is that all right? Okay, let's go. Let's, no, 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 you're supposed to go a different direction. Oh, yeah, okay, we didn't explain this to him. <laughs> okay, now imagine Justin is trying to go that way, and I'm trying to go this way. This is not going to help. We're not going anywhere. But if Justin and I decide, I'm going to follow Justin, and I'm going to do what he's doing, and I'm going to participate with what he, where he is going, can you go this way? Then it becomes a different story, right? Then it becomes like, okay, this is easier. Dare I say it's easy? Because I know what my weight felt like before. His yoke is easy. But now imagine... Let's put the weight down. <laughs> now imagine if Justin there offers to pick up my weight. I'm like, no, no. No, thank you. No, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. I can do it on my own. And Justin is offering to help. And I'm like, no, 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 you're fine. No, no. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'm quite happy on my own. I don't need your help. How ridiculous would that be? Absolutely ridiculous. And yet God is saying, come, work with me. My yoke is easy. Right, 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 right. Very good. I don't know what weight you carry, but it is not me who's saying it. It's God who is saying, give me all your weights. And somehow, as we walk together, 
as we do this life together, my yoke is easy. Thank you so much, Justin. <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. You have done excellently. Thank you. I just let, let's read it one more time. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Not those who are just feeling light and happy. No, no, no. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, I don't know how we sometimes do life. I have met people who have gone through the darkest of valleys. We have um, our general manager is an incredible man of God. He actually has an incredible testimony which started years ago when he was in a car crash. And God woke up his wife in the middle of the night and said, you're going to get a phone call. And they're going to tell you that your husband is dead. First of all, he is not. The second thing they're going to tell you is that he will never walk again. I want you to know that he is going to walk again. And um, long story short, that's exactly what happened. She got a phone call saying, your husband is dead. And she said, no, he is not. And then they realized that actually got the drivers mixed up. Um, the second thing they told her was, we will um, um, amputate his legs. She said, no, you're not, because he will walk again. He was in a wheelchair for two years. And then miraculously walked again. How stunning. But a year ago, they went through um, a, another difficult time where his wife was diagnosed with cancer. Um, she was told, you're stage 4B. You have about a year to live. And there's no hope. We can't operate. They both saw God say, with long life, will I satisfy you? And so they stood on the word of God. Um, they were told, we'll give you chemo. If anything shrinks, we will operate. Um, but we'll see what happens. She went to the chemo. Uh, they shrunk. They were able to operate. And they said, hey, hey, it's great that we're able to operate. But we know the cancer is everywhere. And so you know, this, is, this is great that we're able to do this. But now we have to tackle the rest. But then when they went to check for the rest of the cancer, couldn't find any. <laughs> Incredible story. But you know the one thing that I love about their story is that Rob said to us as his pastor, he said, guys, I have never understood the scripture, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I will place a banquet before your enemies. He's like, I can only tell you that while we went through this journey, I understood what feasting in the shadow of the valley of death looked like. He's like, we had so much peace. We felt God's presence all around us. We knew he was with us. It's the most incredible story. Yeah. Yet at the same time, just before that had happened, our worship pastor, his um, mom went through, had a, um, a brain clot that happened very suddenly, very quickly, and um, ended up in hospital, and within a few days she passed away. He did not understand what had happened. Yet he is a worship pastor, and he understands worship. Through the sobbing and the tears, and the pain, he raised his hands in worship. And he said, though all this has happened, I will wait on the Lord and I will trust in his name. He actually wrote a song that has just been released about his journey. But in, through the midst of it all, he just said, I was able to worship. I just was able to worship. I don't understand what your weight looks like. But what I do know is that when you are paired with Jesus, somehow... He comes into the middle of the situation, and somehow he helps. I have had parents of lost children tell me, I don't know why, and I will never understand, but what I do know is that I've never known the presence of God as close to me as when I went through this. I am a, I am a, a, a child of five. There is five of us in my home. Um, my mother was 28 with five kids, and my father passed away with cancer. And all I can tell you is that I've never known God the Father as the Father revealed in my life, as I have known God. When people talk about your Father, that's it. He is my Father. All of her children, 
are walking with God. They all love him. And my mother, who is a saint, is an incredible woman, she, she determined that she was going to wait and not get married and just invest in her kids. And 30 years later, when we're thinking we need to get ready to take care of her because she's in her 70s, she meets this amazing man, <laughs> gets remarried in her 70s, and is now cruising around the world because that's what you do when you're in your 70s. But I tell you what, when the word of God says his yoke is easy, he's not saying it lightly. He is saying, hey, if you join with me, if you pair with me, I'm going to be there for you. I hope that helps somebody today. The second thing that this verse tells us is not just come and yoke with me and join with me and do things with me. It says actually learn from me. Come and learn from me. By the way, guys, this is only large because I need really large print, okay? I'm not trying to show off my big Bible here. <laughs> it has got really large print in it. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, God has given us some beautiful instructions in here that are actually easy and we just kind of complicate, right? Culture complicates or things we have gone through complicates it, or history complicates it. But maybe, just maybe, when he says, learn from me, he's given us some things that are actually easy if we join in his work. Let's do a little easy test. Okay, here we go. One plus one. Good job, guys. <laughs> learn from me. Okay, next equation. Anyone? No, because you know, if you're a mathematician, you might go, hang on, guys. It's not that it's not easy. It's just a little bit harder. It's hard. <laughs> and there's no spiritual significance of this, by the way. We're just talking about things that are easy and things that get a little bit more complicated. Of course, we can work that out eventually with more work, <laughs> with more work and more thinking. But which one is easy? The first one is easy. That is just a little bit harder. When Jesus says, come, my yoke is easy. Learn from me. There is some simple stuff that he wants us to learn from. There is some simple stuff that he's like, hey, I have some equations. This is what I'm going to call them. I have some equations of life here that you can learn from me. But actually, when you apply them, make life easier. So I'm going to put some Bible life equations up, if that's okay. Are we okay with some maths? Okay, let's do some maths. Let's go with the first one. What have we got? Love is greater than fear. His perfect love conquers every fear. The moment we have a salvation call in our church, this is my prayer, straight away, like God, with your love right now, just don't invade that person's heart that it would take away any fear from coming forward to know you. If you have dealt with fear in your life, you know it's a hard door to close, but we can all close it. The more we actually lean into his love and his revelation of who he is and what he says about us. Love is greater than fear. Okay, um, next one. Let's see what we have. Oh, forgiveness equals sin divided by infinity. It actually means zero. Maybe I complicated that equation. <laughs> like when Jesus says he forgives you, when you come before him and you're like, God, I repent. It says that he throws this into oblivion, into the middle of the sea. And yet the enemy keeps coming and attacking us with things we've done from the past. And God wants you to know, no, you are forgiven. It is gone. And so you can stand on that word of, God, your forgiveness has set me free. And yet we struggle and we see the struggle for many people. And yet I'm here today to tell you his yoke is easy. He wants you to learn some things about him. If you are forgiven, you are forgiven. And you are free. Amen? Amen. Okay, I have 13 minutes, so we're going to carry on. What's the next one? Prayer over worry. I clearly didn't have the little symbol that we have. How many times do we just not lean into this equation? We've been talking about a problem for like three hours. 
And then you kind of go, oh, maybe we should pray about this. Maybe, maybe we should stop telling someone all the issues that are happening. Maybe we should stop ruminating about what happens and all the worry that I have. Maybe, just maybe, let's listen to that equation that says, let's pray. Let us pray. We are supposed to be an army on our knees. This is supposed to be a house of prayer. We are supposed to understand that what is happening in the supernatural as we pray is so much powerful than what is happening in the natural. Prayer over worry. Simple equation. Breaks strongholds, sets captives free, and yet for some reason, sometimes it can be the last thing we turn to. I love that you're doing prayer meetings till Jesus returns, as you said. That is incredible. You know, and sometimes we pray and we're like, well, it didn't work. Nothing happened. You know, when it says that Daniel prayed and the angel finally came to see him, the angel said to him, from the moment you started to pray, from the moment you sought God, I was on my way to help you, but I was delayed by 21 days. Prayer works. Prayer it starts things off in the, in the spirit. And yet, like Daniel, he didn't stop praying. The Bible said that he kept seeking God. And when the angel comes and says, by the way, I was on my way. <laughs> it's almost like he's like, you know, so sorry for my delay. <laughs> I am here now. Incredible. Just really beautiful. Do not keep praying next equation. I don't have long, but here we go. To dwell equals to rest and refuge and have protection. I think we have Psalms um, 91 up there that we can read. If we don't, yeah. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91 gives us a beautiful equation called dwelling with the Lord. If you dwell, there is refuge. There is protection. You know, Jock had a dream, not it wasn't a dream, it was a picture you had of our home not so long ago. And it was a, he said to me, I had an amazing picture of two angels stationed out of the front doors of our home. And I was like, babe, what did they look like? And he said, I actually couldn't tell because they were so tall and so golden. I couldn't actually see the end. He goes, but they were stationed at the doors of our home. I tell you, we have no idea what God, how God is protecting us, of the angelic army that is around us. I tell you what, the next time I opened my front door, I was like... Guys, good job. <laughs> angel, angel etiquette and all that. We have no idea. We have no idea what God is doing to protect us. We have no idea of the angelic army around us. We have no idea of what he is proceeding and acting on on our behalf. Next one. The kingdom of God is greater than everything else. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek. Church, let's be a church that seeks. Let's be a church that seeks him first, beyond anything else. Let's be a church that puts him before. You know, people always talk about, oh, are we supposed to be with God or work with God or be with God or work with God? You know what? If you are with God and you are seeking God, I promise you that everything in you will want to align to do your work for God. Because that is who he is. You know, the Bible talks about our, our, the man with the talents and bringing them and God increasing that. As you seek, that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to bring your talents to, he, to the church. You want to bring your talents to your workplace. You want to bring your light forward. Because as we seek his kingdom, everything else follows. Okay, I have, I think, like two more equations left. We're going to try to do one. Okay. What does God say about money? Simple math. 10% plus. And you might say to me, like, oh, guys, 10% plus, like, surely that's Old Testament. I don't think so. You know, Abel somehow knew to give his first fruits. Jacob and Abraham somehow knew to bring their 10%. That was all before. That was all before the Levitical law. Malachi says, why do you rob me? How do we rob you, God? By not bringing me your tithe and your offering. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be someone who robs God. The New Testament actually talks about generosity that is way beyond that. 
the disciples came and sold everything. The early church came and was like, everything is God's. It went way beyond it. But I only bring it up because I know this. Then when you step out in your finances, God promises blessing. There is a blessing attached to it. So why would I want you to not have that? I have more equations. We're not going to go into them today. But I just want to, I just wanted to show you. The Bible has some really easy, really easy math. That God is saying, hey, learn from me. Come, learn from me because I want to give you rest. I want to give you rest in your worry. I want to give you rest in these things that you're searching. I want to give you rest in your finances. I want to give you rest in all these things that you are yoking yourself with. And he is saying, come, join me, pair up with me, make your joining a joining with me because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Thanks for watching. For any more information about City Lights, please visit citylightsdubai.org.